We're back now with Starbucks under fire. Protests, as you know, breaking out after two black men were arrested. We're going to speak with Starbucks CEO in a moment, Kevin Johnson. But first, ABC's Lindsay Davis is in Philadelphia, where more protests are planned. Good morning, Lindsay. Good morning, Robin. A few minutes ago, we had about a dozen protesters outside of the Starbucks here, but because of the driving rain, they're now inside, conducting essentially a stand-in. The video has now been viewed more than nine million times. Two black men sitting at a table inside the Starbucks and arrested. What did they do? Outrage is brewing this morning over this viral video showing two black men escorted out of a Philadelphia Starbucks in handcuffs by police. Well, what did they do? What did they do? Someone told me they did. They didn't do anything. I saw the entire thing. Police say the men were sitting at a table without making a purchase and would ask to leave. They refused. That's when an employee called 911, reporting the incident as trespassing. Witnesses, including this businessman who the real estate brokers were about to meet with, say the men were discriminated against for being black. We got called for this. We didn't just come out here. I, what did they get called for? Because there are two black guys sitting here meeting me. I sat in there the other day for an hour and no one asked me to order anything or leave. These guys were being totally calm. They've never raised their voices. They never made any, you know, physical motions or anything. They were just regular guys sitting there. But Philadelphia's police commissioner says his officers did everything by the book. These officers did absolutely nothing wrong. They followed policy. They did what they were supposed to do. Anger is boiling over on social media with the hashtag boycott Starbucks. Comedian Kevin Hart is blaming the local branch, saying this is not a boycott Starbucks situation. This is horrible management. The manager on duty was wrong. It's that simple. Starbucks is now apologizing, saying the video is not representative of our Starbucks mission and values. The basis for the call to police was wrong. You can and should expect more from us. No charges have been filed. Those two men have since been released, and they now have attorneys. Robin. All right, Lindsay, thank you very much. And Starbucks CEO Kevin Johnson joins us now exclusively from Philadelphia. Mr. Johnson, first of all, thank you very much for wanting to come on and, and, and speak with us this morning about something that a lot of people saw and are scratching their heads. And I know that you have said that you want to have a, a more of an investigation. So is there anything more that you know this morning about how and why this happened? Uh, well, good morning, Robin. You know, first of all, I'll say the circumstances surrounding uh, the incident and the outcome in our store on Thursday were reprehensible. They were wrong. And for that, I personally apologize to the two gentlemen that visited our store. Now, certainly, uh, you know, it's my responsibility to, to understand what happened and what led to that and ensure that we fix it. Has anybody asked the store manager why did they do this? I mean, we were talking amongst ourselves. People, you see them in Starbucks all the time conducting business meetings. They're not um, buying any products. And even when we saw in the piece when the woman said that she had been there too, has anybody asked her why these particular men did she feel compelled to call the police? Well, Robin, certainly with 28,000 stores around the world, uh, different regions put in some slightly different guidelines in how they handle certain situations. In sort of reviewing this case, the guidelines that they had in place indicated uh, a certain set of scenarios in which the police were to be called. Now there are some scenarios where the police should be called. If there's uh, uh, threats or disturbance, uh, those may be appropriate times. In this case, none of that occurred. It was completely inappropriate to engage the police. And so clearly there's an opportunity for us to provide clarity. And in addition to that, I'd say there's training, more training that we're going to do with our store managers, not only around the guidelines, but training around unconscious bias. What happened to those two gentlemen was wrong. Because you said in your statement, and I quote here, that Starbucks stands firmly against racial profiling. So you believe that was the case here? Well, Robin, Starbucks was built as a company that creates a warm, welcoming environment for all customers. That didn't happen in this case. That I know. And so it's my responsibility to ensure that we review everything. We review the actions of the store manager, we review the, 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 the guidelines that were provided, and we review and invest in the training necessary to ensure that doesn't happen again. People are and that's what we will hold ourselves accountable Excuse, to. I'm sorry, sir. Uh, people are wondering, will any disciplinary action be taken against the employee? 
Well, while I know it's easy for me to say and point blame to one person in this incident, you know, my responsibility is to look not only to that individual, but look more broadly at the, the circumstances that set that up, just to ensure that this never happens again. So those reviews are, are, are conducting uh, as we speak, and I've been very focused on understanding what guidelines and what training ever let this happen. Uh, what happened was wrong, and we will fix it. The two gentlemen who were arrested um, have yet to speak publicly about this, but you have made it clear that you really want to have a face-to-face -to -face to, with them to apologize. What exactly do you want to say to them, sir? Well, Robin, first of all, you know, I reached out and we made contact with the representative of the two gentlemen. And I'm hopeful that while I'm here in Philadelphia, I'll have a chance to meet with them face to face. First, I'd like to apologize to them in person. And I'd like to have a dialogue with them so that I can ensure that, uh, that we have the opportunity to really understand the situation and uh, show some compassion and empathy for the, ex the experience they went through. And finally, you know, as we're working to solve this, I'd like to invite them to join me in finding a constructive way to solve this issue. Good to hear that. Make it a teachable moment. Kevin Johnson, thank you very much for your time this morning, for your remarks. We appreciate it very much, sir. Take care. Thank you. Thank you. Well, Robin, that was really something. You know, we've seen a lot of corporate officials, a lot of public uh, leaders in trouble and have to apologize. This guy did not hedge, took nope. full responsibility, said he's going to fix it. Mm -hmm. No equivocation. Yes. Textbook. I know. We, we rarely see that from a CEO. He wasn't mincing words at all, not making apologies for what happened, but just owning up to it. And I, I really appreciate what he said at the end to bring these two gentlemen in. And we did ask to speak to the two gentlemen. They do have an attorney now. They are, have not made any public statements. But to bring them in on the conversation and say, how do we stop this from happening? Because if you watch this video, a lot of the customers they were white and they were saying they didn't do right. anything. Yeah. But thankfully, they remained calm and the police remained calm as well during this. It was, it was a powerful, powerful mm -hmm. apology. Mm -hmm. yeah. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel and don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.